Halifax, MFRC. Hi, Angelia. Um, Barb? Okay, yep. Barb Foods from the Winnipeg MFRC. Okay. Uh, Kathy is not quite set up yet, but how about Charlotte? Wainwright MFRC. Wainwright. And then we have Christina. Wainwright as well. Uh, Janet? Janet? Bueller, Bueller, Janet, Janet. <laughs> she must have stepped away. Lisa, you're from Goose Bay. Thanks for putting that beside your name. Lynn, what location are you from? I'm a Squimalt. Hi, Lynn. Hi. <laughs> and Maria? Uh, yeah, it looks like she walked away. Maria's from Van Capsier. <laughs> just so you know. Uh, Mathieu, if you want to just announce where you're from. Hi, everyone. Mathieu, um, headquarters in Ottawa. Um, May? She had difficulty. She's from Comox. How about you, Mona? Okay. Mona, it sounds like Mona's having some difficulties as well. Rachel? Um, hi, I'm with the Military Family Services Veteran Family Program here in Ottawa. And then uh, Yvonne. Don't forget to unmute, Yvonne. And while you're waiting, uh, Maria, can you please give me a green check? That way I'll know which one is you. Thank you. Frederick is joining Marie Claude and Marie from Van as well. L Louise, would you like me to record the session? Yes, please. Will do. Okay. Okay, Yvonne from uh, Ottawa, I'm the financier. I'm the one who's getting all your reports, guy. <laughs> Yvonne, I've heard so many wonderful things about you. It's lovely to meet you. And Thank you, you so much for all that you do. My name is Margaret. I'm from Winnipeg. Okay. <laughs> and uh, wow, you do a great, great job. Thank you. <laughs> and May, can you please give me a green check? May yeah, Reimer, can you please give me a green check? They were having issues earlier. Okay. Very good. Thank okay, you. So Kathy let's get started. From Comox. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Now, Kathy, uh, oh, never mind. My apology. I was uh, thinking you were a pilot location, but you're not. Okay, so we're just going to get started. Um, what you see on the screen here is the financial report. Um, we just need everybody to put their um, put themselves on mute. That would be greatly appreciated so we don't get any background noise. Um, so uh, what you're looking here is at the uh, financial reporting, and this is uh, specifically for the non-pilot location. So if you're coming from a pilot location, your report is uh, significantly different. So Ben Cartier, if you have any questions at the end, just let me know, uh, you're, um, because yours will be a little bit different as well as Halifax. But this will just be, this is only a small portion of what, as a pilot location, you're reporting on. So. Please bear with me as I, you know, focus everything on the non-pilot locations today. Um, so when we're talking about the reporting for the Vet and Family Program, each location has received $10,000 specifically in the support to the pre-release for uh, medically um, prior to, you know, the official notification of release. So um, keep in mind that when you're looking at doing programs and services that the $10,000 is um, in support of the pre-release member and their family in preparation for the transition. So the moment that the military member receives their official notification of release, that's from that point on that the service can be provided to that demographic. So, so just to go through, because we'll, I'll give you a couple scenarios as we go along so they understand where we're all coming from. So in the MOU between CFMWS and um, MFS um, and, and VAC, sorry, is they have defined specific expectations as far as where the funding is going to be allocated. So the MFRCs have uh, the specific funding allocations under exit meeting referral, which is the pre-release piece. 
Um, and so that funding allocation is specifically to you. Um, but what Yvonne and I have done is actually broken it down even more specific to understand, to the best of our ability to understand the kind of uh, program delivery you're going to do under this program. So under description, we have facility rental. So this is where you would provide in detail um, any rent cost for renting space specifically for a delivering of a program or a service. So let's just say, for example, your MFRC decides to hire uh, someone that's specialized in your community with the, you know, PTSD and you're going to do a workshop in that workshop and you, you know, because you had a hundred people interested in the workshop, for example, you had to rent whether it's a hotel conference room or go to the Legion and spend money uh, for the space of the Legion, you would define that there under facility rental. So under details, make sure you put, you know, the details to say PTSD workshop, uh, held at uh, Legion location, um, and then even if you could put the dates of the uh, the workshop, that would be really great. So the more details, the better, because then it's easier for Yvonne and I to report back to VAC what you're doing in your location. So under workshop, um, all expenses, so things like the cost to hire that person, um, the cost to hire the facilitator to run the workshop and all the costs associated to make that happen. So let's say you decided to offer fruit and drinks during that workshop as well, or you had to get special um, printing material for that workshop, put it all, your total for that workshop goes there. The details again need to be provided, you know, whether it's printing costs, the uh, food, you know, those sorts of things all need to be detailed. We cannot stress enough the importance of the details. So if we're uh, on the next line, sorry, I shouldn't be using my arrow. Um, in the next line, supplies, under supplies, um, let's say, for example, your MFRC decided to hire uh, or extend uh, one of the employees or one of your coordinators an extra five hours a week, which means that it needed additional supplies or equipment to be uh, to accommodate the additional tasks that were assigned to that position. Please indicate them here. Again, cannot stress enough, detail, detail, detail. That would be great. Under the travel, this is for local travel. This is not for the travel that you would have, say, for the upcoming training on the 9th and 10th of March. This is for local travel only. So. If, for example, the coordinator had to travel to that lesion to provide that workshop um, and there was a mileage of, you know, five kilometers at whatever your MFRC um, mileage rate is, this is where you would put that. Again, the details. Um, if, uh, in this case as well, it's really important that the, um, the supporting document is reflective of what your policy is, your MFRC policy. So if you have a travel, um, a mileage claim form for your MFRC, please include that as your supporting document for the claimage of your travel for the local travel. Okay? Information and referral is all things to do with information and referral. So uh, whether it's um, a session, whether it's uh, hiring someone, whether it's putting um, an advertising in a local paper to provide, you know, details about the program that you're supporting, which is the informa information referral. Again, you can certainly uh, provide the details there. Again, detail, detail, detail. Now, extra staff and cost. This is a big question that's coming from the majority of you. Again, if let's say uh, you hired an MFR or you already had an existing MFRC who was part-time, and you decided to increase their hours to full-time hours in support of the veteran family uh, program, this is where you would indicate your extra staff and costs. So let's say uh, for, uh, because we're, re we're re reporting monthly, let's say there was an additional 20 hours per month for that employee to support the veteran family program, this is where you would say 20 hours times uh, $35 an hour equals so much, so that equals your total, okay? If you have multiple people, let's say you decide to do, you know, your finance person and, or, and a coordinator, um, make sure you indicate it 
in this the details the total only one total but put your details in to say to break it down between the multiple staff members that you're claiming as extra staff and cost now under child care expenses this is for the respite or emergency child care that you could provide to uh, a veteran family a veteran in, or a pre-releasing member in their family so let's say for example uh, Corporal Smith and his wife, um, in preparation for their transition, require, uh, you know, to attend couples counseling sessions, whether it's here in Mafarsi or, or somewhere else, and they require childcare expenses. You could put those expenses towards, uh, in this column here as childcare expenses, in, that shows the support to Corporal Smith in preparation for his transition to civilian life. Now, under other, we left it under other because there are sometimes in some situations, some MFRCs are doing some pretty incredible work that is, doesn't fall specifically under any of these categories. This is where uh, you would uh, provide the detail again um, and then the total of what that expense is. So what is really important is that, um, is that the uh, supporting documents reflect what you are claiming. If you're saying you're going to claim $2,000, but you're only showing, you know, $1,000 under extra staffing and $500 under childcare expenses, it needs to match. So it's really, really important that your totals match. So um, the other thing too is that one of the important things to do, what we're expecting you to do, is provide an official invoice. Because this is not uh, money that comes out of your annual funding allocations, this, these are funds that come out of uh, the public side through NPF, um, sorry, the non-public side through NPF, the reporting is very different and that's why it's kept very separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of an official invoice and I know this seems a little silly, but you have no idea how much trouble we have with uh, with an invoice. A lot of, some MFRCs provide us with a letterhead so it's, uh, it, it really is truly important that we show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you uh, my desktop. And I'm going to show you an official invoice, okay? So this invoice is from the Kingston FRC. You'll see that there is an invoice number, there's an invoice date, and there's a due date as well. Um, but also, you know, the official address. I can't, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so... Um, what what they've done is instead of breaking down, what we don't want you to do is break down all your costs that you've um, identified on the reporting, the financial reporting sheet. All we ask is that one amount, but that this, this the disclaimer, this reimbursement, this disclaimer that says reimbursement for expenses incurred for veteran family pilot, that is absolutely crucial as far as part of your reporting. So it's really important that you provide an official uh, invoice that it has an official address, an invoice number, and a date, and that the statement is included, okay? Then what you do is you take your invoice and your original um, Excel workbook with all of your uh, reportings that are on there, you email that with your supporting uh, documents all together. You can email it to, what a lot of MFRCs do is email it to the MFS finance um, email and CC me or vice versa. As long as myself or Yvonne gets a copy, that's all we ask for. And then what we do is we review it and we make sure that all these little pieces are attached to it. Okay? Just gonna, I'm just going to stop sharing my window. Now what I've done as well is I've provided, uh, I don't think I get, I don't have that, uh, market. I don't have the slide where the, uh, the how to report, it's not on my, uh, it's not on my window here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you again my window. Uh, my uh, my desktop, and I'm going to show you a document that was created specifically for reporting. So here we go on the um, what Yvonne and I had done is actually did a actual financial report instructions. 
it, it appears that some people have received this, um, these instructions and some haven't. So everything that we talked about uh, up until now is actually reflected upon uh, how to report everything um, in these instructions. These instructions are also, as well as all the templates, are available on the MFS website under the Veteran Family Program. So again, this is a financial report only, so do your uh, report on your grand total for the month um, and include all the costs specific to the Veteran Family Program. If you have other MFSP expenses that did not go towards the Veteran Family Program, that, does not, that is not covered here. So you need to make sure that that's reported on your, your annual reporting through your, uh, your MFSP uh, reporting. So you, all you need to do is produce one invoice per month with the details, specifically the Veteran Family Program, and all the supporting documents, okay? It's really important that the supporting documents reflect what you're reporting on your spreadsheet. Additional salaries, again, charged to the pilots, so extra staffing costs. Again, here's an example. Information referral coordinator, five, dollars, five hours at $15 per hour. If there's more than one person that you're uh, charging to the program, make sure you write them both down. Your local travel, specifically for uh, travel mileage locally. If and when there is uh, travel outside of, you know, like for example, the upcoming uh, tra uh, training, we will provide specific instructions as to how to expense those. Um, so again, each month belongs to a specific quarter and the totals are recapitulated every month within the workbook. So it's really important, I cannot stress enough, how the exact same workbook is uh, shared month to month because that is your official submission for, uh, for any expenses for the Veteran Family Program. And so what we receive as an official copy should mirror exactly what you have um, you know, that uh, we share the same copy because there's, you're not allowed to modify your report once it's been submitted. Okay, so again, if you want to send it to your invoice and everything to finance or if you want to CC me as well, so either of us receive them, that's perfectly fine. And as I showed you on uh, the example of the invoice, this statement, the reimbursement for expenses, is absolutely important that it's included, okay? So that's what I have so far for you. Now, uh, May, I don't know if she can still hear me, but May, there are some locations that have provided some really interesting uh, suggestions as far as spending the $10,000. Now, I know the $10,000 was provided at a very uh, late in the game. I think you didn't receive until almost November. Um, and a lot of MFRCs are struggling with how to spend the money. So one, uh, some of the ideas that we have is um, May actually sent me a really great example of, I don't know, let me get back to you on it. So May actually has, May and Comox actually has um, a workspace specifically with computers and su such for to help with uh, members to prepare their resumes and all their employment pieces. Um, and they have, OMOX, uh, COMOX struggles or is, has requested that the Vendor Family Program pay for the replacement of some of the chairs at the computer stations. That I'm not sure about. So if you have a specific scenario or a specific idea for your MFRC and it doesn't fall, doesn't sound like it falls under the, the, the scope of what the Veteran Family Program should be about, which is the enhanced INR, uh, the prevention and inter intervention programming, send me an email or call me and I will find an answer for you. Uh, unfortunately for May, I, the person I need to speak to has been away for the last couple of days and as you know, we all got snowed in yesterday, so, so we're one day behind the eight ball. So um, the other, uh, there was another example I was going to give you, but I forgot. Um, so if you're not sure how to report it or if you're not sure how, if it's an eligible expense, all you need to do is send an email and call me and we will figure it out together. So what a lot of MFRCs are going to do because they have the excess of the $10,000 is they are going to send um, some staff members towards the, for the training on the 9th and the 10th of, of March. That is an eligible expense. 
Um, what I request that you do is that uh, we'll just wait for the official instructions on how to report that because we may be able to, uh, we'll, we'll see how we're going to report that separately or whether it's part of your reporting. So um, please wait for instructions as to how to report uh, that expense for the travel to come to Ottawa. Does anyone have uh, any questions so far? Uh, Louise, okay. Yvonne, is Does, Yvonne here? Can okay. I can I yes. give a little bit more instruction about the uh, supporting document? Um, sure, absolutely. The supporting document is very important. A lot of people are sending me stuff that the total that I have on the support document doesn't match the the, uh, the the amount you put on your report because a lot of people decide not to charge me just charge MFS just the half of the GST and everything, it would be nice if every supporting document you write exactly how much you're charging to MFS. I found that a lot of people, I have to guess a lot of numbers. They are, all the supporting are there, but it's not clear. It will be easier if you said MFS 350 bucks for that invoice. It will help me um, a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I just added it here as a, as a note. Any other questions? Okay. Does anyone have an example as to uh, or a question with regards to whether or not an expense is eligible or not um, that they want to share with the group? Wow, you guys are quiet. Are you sure you're not snowed in like we are? <laughs> um, Give me a check, a green check or an X if this presentation of the finances is what you were looking for. As far as details about financial reporting. Okay. All right. Um, that is pretty much all that I have for you uh, with regards to the financial reporting. Um, so, would there be, uh, if it, would anyone be interested in a different uh, WebEx session for next time, specifically on a topic specific? Hi, it's Janet here. I'm from North Bay, and we are not on. We actually have a VFC coordinator, so. Our, we're not. We're a pilot pilot site, I assume. Yes. Um, so our um, our reporting is completely different than this one. Um, I do know my coordinator is leaving next week. I believe it is for out west. Yes. That is a separate bill, is it not? Yes, that is a separate bill. It's a completely separate training uh, fund envelope. Okay, and uh, when she gets back, how how soon do I need to get that to you? Because of course, we're coming up to year end as well. Yeah, well, soon, this, as soon as you possibly can, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, so as soon as you know you finalize the claim with her and you're able to submit uh, submit that expense, that would be really great. And just supporting document and an invoice then would be yep. all I need to send you guys. That's right. Okay, thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Any other questions? Uh, where do I place my one-on-one -on -one session with members? Was one of the questions. Is that no? Anything else? Oh, Yvonne, you have déjà posé ta question, Yvonne. Oui. Ta main, ta main. Oui, oui. Okay. Non, mais t'as vu ça longtemps. Okay. Okay, may I follow this up? I think that's it for me. Uh, I hope that uh, it provided you information that you're looking for. Um, if you come up with, uh, no one's actually provided uh, any suggestions for another session. So what we'll do is, um, if you come up with an idea, please send me an email, um, and then we'll we'll resume another session, whether it's WebEx or another way. At any, I cannot stress enough that. Because this is a new program, because this is a new initiative, and because we're all new to this, any sort of questions or anything that comes up, I cannot stress enough the importance of 
how we are available to you. So whether it's a finance question or whether it's a programming question, Yvonne, Mathieu, Rachel and I are all here for you um, because we've actually been um, challenged a few times, which is always a really great thing. So, um, you know, because, you know, just because I have an MFRC background doesn't mean that I know exactly what's going on in your center. So, and especially to meet the needs of the specific demographics, which is fairly new for most of us. So please do not hesitate to call us or email us at any time. Okay? So if everyone wants to give me a beautiful smiley face of some sort to tell me you guys are good to go. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, Christina, did you have a question? Yes, I did, actually. Um, I just thought of something. In terms of workshops, like I understand in terms of all expenses, but there isn't really like specific parameters in terms of what that workshop could be. Is there or am I missing something? Well, it's uh, the parameters around the workshop. So let's say you're doing, uh, you want to do a workshop on parenting skills um, to de-stressing for de-stressing um, then um, and the, you want to offer it to the uh, the transitioning, uh, the families and the member that are in preparation transitioning, those are the types of things that you're looking for. So if you think of um, the focus should be on the enhancing the information referral, providing, offering some sort of transition program or in preparation for a transition, and of course the intervention part. So, you know, like we have Suzanne Nolt that's doing uh, training sessions for all the coordinators on uh, the grieving and identity crisis of, um, you know, retirement, whether it's, you know, military or not, it's still going to have an effect on the family. So really look at how, you know, it's really what the challenge for most of us is that we don't really know the demographics, let alone know what their true needs are. It's going to be really challenging, I think, for a lot of us to really know what is the right fit for workshops or sessions or those sorts of things. Um, but, you know, those are the kinds of things, whatever it takes to, to provide as, move, as smooth of a transition to civilian life as possible, it's kind of the guide that we can, we've been working with. So whatever that looks like within your community, you can, you can expense that as part of this program. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, it does. I think it's still, I mean, obviously, as you said, we don't really totally know the demographics, so we don't know totally mm -hmm. what totally to offer, I guess. So it still leaves it fairly open, but on the other hand, I mean, it's it's how each of us views what we need in that transition, I guess. Yes. One of the, uh, what uh, Shiloh and Trenton has done recently, and although they're a pilot uh, location, this could be considered for most of you, if not all of you, is they provided a community conversation session. Uh, Trenton hired a, a facilitator to facilitate the discussion, um, which really brought in some great feedback from the community specific. So it was community specific to the veteran or the transitioning member and their family, um, specifically on identifying what their needs are so that it provided some guidance for those MFRCs in the future planning through the veteran family program. So that 10000 or like April 1st, you're getting that $20,000. If that's something that would be of interest to you, you know, you could certainly explore that. The only word of caution behind that is that it cannot be formalized. Formalized in the sense that if you're going to do surveys or that sort of thing, you cannot do a formalized survey uh, or a needs assessment unless it goes through DGP, I don't know, SSRB, which is, you know, through the community, uh, the community needs assessment toolkit questionnaire will need to be all the approved. So if you can make it more of a conversation, informal, meet and greet, you know, that sort of thing to, to gather, to start understanding what those needs are, those don't need to be formalized. But if you want to do a community needs assessment or a survey of some sort, it will have to be uh, formalized and approved. Okay. That's that's good information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got lots of smiley faces. Last chance for last question. Okay, if everybody wants to change their coffee cups, because means you're ready to go. I love that one. That's a great interactive activity. <laughs> Mm 
Okay. May, oh, there you go. Awesome. Thank you so very much, everybody. And I really appreciate your uh, participation. So don't be shy. Give us a call if you need anything, okay? Uh, to exit, you either can press the, your X or you can go under File and End Session to close your session. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Well done, Louise. Take the ball back.